First, let's take a look at the mountain behind the monastery. It's not exactly stunning or lofty like the Yellow Mountain, which is misty, ethereal, and difficult to scale. On the contrary, covered with lush green trees, Mount Jingting has a gentle slope, which allows even elderly people to stroll to its summit without difficulty. This accessible landscape gives Jingting a plain and ordinary quality, which exactly corresponds to the notion of Amitabha recitation. If we were to compare Zen Buddhism to a mountain, it would be like the Yellow Mountain or Tai Shan. It's one of China's five great mountains. They're all steep and lofty. The Pure Land tradition instead is suitable for anyone to cultivate. But in spite of its diminutive stature, Mount Jingting boasts some important cultural connections. Li Bai was a great poet of the Tang Dynasty as well as a Buddhist. It's said that he visited Mount Jingting seven times throughout his life, and immortalized it in his famous poem "Sitting Alone on Mount Jingting." It goes like this. The birds vanished after soaring high. A solitary cloud floats freely by. We watch each other, neither growing tired. You and you only, Mountain Jingting and I. The poem depicts three natural objects: birds, solitary cloud, and Mountain Jingting, as well as their relationship to Li Bai's inner world. The first two objects, the birds and solitary cloud, pass by and disappear as they don't relate to the poet. There is no resonance. Only Mountain Jingting responds to him as if to say, "I'm your support and I'm always with you. I'll never grow tired of loving you." That's why Li Bai exclaimed, "We watch each other, neither growing tired. You and you only, Mountain Jingting and I." Let's now look at this poem from a Dharma perspective. The first line depicts people of the secular world chasing fame and gain. A life of status and success is their goal and ideal. Their thoughts and activities are fickle and clamorous, just like the constant twittering of the birds. They do not understand Li Bai, who doesn't seek such things, nor does he understand them. They have nothing in common. That's why the birds vanished after soaring high. A solitary cloud floats freely by. Describes a lone cloud passing literally on the braids. It represents Hinayana Buddhism, which emphasizes individual salvation. A practitioner is like a cloud. He leads an unburdened, liberated life, paying no attention to the turbid, mundane world. Although Li Bai admires the carefree cloud, it is not in line with his own aspirations. Then, what does Mountain Jingting stand for? To find the answer, we gotta see his another poem, "Ode to the Pure Land." Facing west, where the sun sets, I watch from afar the Buddha's countenance of great compassion. His eyes are as clear as the four oceans. His body glitters like the purple gold mountain. Those who diligently recite his name will surely be reborn in his land. Thus, it is called the land of bliss. The pearly nets, jeweled trees, heavenly flowers, and fragrant pavilions, visions of the land appear before my eyes, and I aspire to rebirth in that dharma site. The seeds of his merit and virtues covertly protect me, serving as a bridge to final liberation. My negative karma of eight billion kappas will be extinguished, like thin frost being blown away by wind. I often visualize the Buddha of infinite life, gazing at length on the light of the white tuft of hair between his eyebrows. Well, according to this poem, we know that his aspiration is to gain rebirth through Amitabha recitation. Then Mountain Jingting stands for the practice of Amitabha recitation. Well, except this special tradition, in almost any other school of Buddhism, practitioners find it difficult to learn practice. This is due to the corruption of our current historical era, as well as the limited capacities of contemporary practitioners. That is what the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas 
and generations of eminent monks and lineage masters have earnestly taught. So what is the relationship between Amitabha and you? Let's make examples of parents. Other Buddhas also love you very much, but they seem more like your teachers. Teachers open the door you enter through your own efforts. Amitabha is more like your father. He gives you all his meritorious assets accumulated over countless years so long as you recite Namo Amitabha Buddha. It also likes a mother missing her child and a child thinking of his mother. Amitabha Buddha and sentient beings are not far from each other, especially a sentient being recollects and evokes the Buddha. This is how Amitabha and sentient beings watch each other, neither growing tired. Well, the mountain gate is the next stop on our journey. Now let's look at the structure as a whole. Its architectural style is modeled after the buildings of the Tang Dynasty. Why? If one were to choose an architectural style to represent Amitabha Buddha's infinite kindness, compassion, power, and vows, it would be that of the Tang. Its features are plain and unadorned, steady and grand, symbolizing the Buddha's ability to safeguard and protect us. It also matches the features of Pure Land practice, simple, concentrated, and secure. Buildings of later times, such as those in the Ming and Qing dynasties, seem more graceful and delicate, characterized by more sophisticated keynotes and ritual ornaments. While beautiful in their own right, these later styles do not resonate with the teaching of Amitabha in quite the same way. In addition, the architecture of the Tang Dynasty helps us to cherish the memory of our founding patriarch, Master Shandao, who lived and taught during this period. It helps us to feel close to him, almost as if we were his contemporaries. You wonder who was this man and how do we know him? When we meet next time, you will see. So join us next time to discover Master Shandao's legacy. Alright, see you, Namo Amitwofo.